Hello, this is The Provoked Porn with another behind the scenes look at how I capture footage. This time, something slightly different. I am going to take a device that I've already looked at, the K65 RGB Mini, and recreate its look and feel with a number of keycap designs in stop motion. So I'm gonna use two cameras to capture some stop motion changes to this keyboard that hopefully make it look pretty magnificent. The end result should be pretty good. Now Corsair has been kind enough to send a number of their keycaps. I've got red, blue, pink, green, and white. So it should be able to create some pretty nifty designs with it. Now, that is quite a collection. <laughs> Those boxes are at about 30 pounds each, so they're not cheap, but they are gonna be pretty magnificent uh, because the benefit of the K65 RGB Mini is that it now works with these keys because it has a standard bottom row and so therefore you can get pbt double shot keycaps in a variety of colors and i'm going to install them in a variety of ways the plan is to actually spend the next few hours and possibly multiple hours tomorrow capturing footage of these keys going on to the keyboard in a number of different ways so rather than just changing the entire keyboard to be white for example i'm going to change it so maybe one row is white and then another row is green and then i'm going to create some patterns and i'm hopefully going to try and make it sort of wash across the keyboard which is going to be very tricky and it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of photographs and so it's going to be pretty difficult but hopefully the end result should be really good uh, time will tell so I'm gonna go through the setup process now and talk about how I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna get stuck into it. So stick with me and watch for the end result. So the first step of this is gonna be preparing this area. Obviously I've got the keys. The idea is I'm going to probably set it up. So the keyboard's here roughly. I'm gonna do a top down shot with this camera onto there. I'm gonna use this camera at another angle, which I've not worked out yet. And then I'm going to have these keys laid out on this side, hopefully out of view, and then push, smash across the keyboard. The biggest challenges are going to be to keep this keyboard in a static position so it doesn't move. Because obviously if it shifts in any way, in any direction, that will ruin the stop motion entirely. And that is actually a problem I've had in the past. So I thought about blue tacking it down to the desk the other alternative is I could use my cutting mat. So I could use this giant cutting mat, which might actually be the more sensible option. Put that down in a position where I can then work out where the center of the shot is gonna be and line it up perfectly. So if it does move, it's really easy to push back into the right place. So hopefully this sort of shot will be the best. I don't know if it will look as good though. I'd really like to do it on the wood. The plan is actually to have this end up a final position with multiple different sort of color setups. So I'm going to do one initially and then hopefully stop and finish with that, get some video clips of it and then start again and make for another interesting pattern. So actually it probably would be beneficial to use this mat. So I'm probably going to do that. I think it won't be as exciting. I think it'll look nicer if it was on the wood but there's a lot more danger of it moving around. Maybe I'll see how it goes. And if it goes well, then I might try and do it on the desk itself. Well, I also don't want to put a blue tackle over this desk. So it's another consideration. So I've actually think, been thinking this mat could move around as well, which is obviously a problem. So what I'm going to do is take some blue tack and try and stick the mat to the desk to start with. Maybe not that much, that's a lot. Um, and hopefully keep it in a good position. Although I can use the edge of the very edge of the desk as a guide. I guess it still might be beneficial to do this. So I'm going to do that and see how that goes. Next stage of this is actually going to be getting the this camera into the right position or into a position where the keyboard's going to be and then making sure the view's good enough. Uh, working out what lens to use as well, because I've got a macro one on there at the moment. That's probably not the best one. And where am I going to position it? The most satisfying would probably be 
somewhere in the middle where the numbers line up and that will give a good sort of shot so maybe if I work out where that is that is actually kind of it actually it's a pretty good shot right there so that's basically looking straight down into the center of it and then I can put it it goes about where this 90 degree angle mark is yeah there bang oh that looks fantastic I love it when it gets lucky like that so then I'm just going to try and stick it down to that as well just in case because when pulling the keys out it'd be really easy to accidentally pull the board up and if it moves even a millimetre it's going to ruin it so another thing I thought about is this I've got a little remote control system which I can attach to the camera that is basically a remote shutter so you can just basically remotely press this and then it'll activate the shutter that then means I don't have to touch the camera which is another problem because if it moves any minute detail of distance it'll again ruin the shot so I've got to make sure the thing stays still and the camera stays still and so having this is actually going to be very useful um, obviously having it on a tripod would be preferable but I think it'll be pretty stable as long as I don't touch it this is all going to be in photo mode so then basically when I move the keys I then take a shot I usually go for three shots actually because then it gives me more photos and it gives a smoother image we'll see how we go with this so here it is in progress nice and easy I'll put that outside of the shot and then just click that button when I need to this is not the final thing now because I need to reposition it but that's how it's going to be so here's a bit of a blue tech bodge job hopefully once I've stuck that down to the desk which is about about here would be the sweet spot and stay in place yep yeah, doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere ideal let's see how that goes So here we are with green, white, and pink, which admittedly looks very bright in this light, but there's too much light going on at the moment. And I'm gonna use these as well as the black keycaps that are already on there to create a watermelon effect. And that's the end goal here is to make an interesting watermelon using a mixture of these keys. So I won't be using all of them, although that itself would probably look glorious. Green, for example, looks pretty mint. Um, but I want to create some patterns so I've laid them out initially and then the plan is to obviously move back and forth between here and over there where I've got the necessary equipment set up and hopefully create a nice stop motion but still keep things organized over here to some degree but out of the way So that work actually took around four hours to do with stop motion from two cameras. What I ended up doing was taking footage from this camera, every row, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute, and footage from this one of every key that came off. And I'll show you what I mean by that, but basically, I take one row of keys off and then put another one on. And for every time I put a key cap back on, 
I'll take a picture with this one. I actually took three pictures with that one for the stop motion. And then by the time I finished the row, I'd take five with this one with the hope that it generates a sort of smooth stop motion at the end of it. I actually got to the point where I had a brainwave, which was essentially to paint a color across the keyboard. So the easiest way to show you what I mean is to show you what the keyboard looks like now. So you can see what the keyboard looks like now. I've essentially got blue and then white, but what it was was blue at one end. And then what I did was I made this row white. And then my idea was to make the next row white and then that row white and then this row white. But rather than making it white, 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 what I thought was if I made this white, and this was still blue and then made this second row white and then made this one blue again and then made this third row white and this two blue again and then fourth row white and then all these blue again and then I can make it look like the white keycaps are washing across the keyboard to the point that they then get to this and I actually ended up with this section as in three bits right at the end is where they've come to a rest and then the rest of it's blue. Now what I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm actually gonna add some new colors. So maybe I'm gonna do red next or green. I haven't decided, I think green might look good as the next one. So I'll end up doing the same thing. I'll put this green and then the second row will become green and then this will be back to blue and then green and then back to blue until it washes across to here. And then I'll probably try and end up with three rows of green and then I'll repeat it again with red and then again with uh, pink and then that'll be it probably and hopefully it'll end up looking really cool. I've w watched back some of the footage and where I did that it actually ended up looking really good but it's very very difficult to do. It takes a lot of time because you've got to take off every keycap, put the new keycaps on, then take them off again <laughs> while keeping them all in the right order so it's easy to do and I was trying to streamline the process but it took a heck of a long time. It's now 8 p.m. ish the second day, so this just shows you how long it takes to get the shots with one camera, this camera in particular, there was 600 photographs taken of just this process of just making it blue and white. I also did a couple of other animations that you'll see in the proper video. So a lot of effort for probably very little return. I imagine not many people will watch this video, but we'll see. If they do, it'd be great. It's now two hours later and the keyboard looks like this, which <laughs> I'm not 100% happy with because I wish I'd changed the space bar. And also I just noticed that this key is blue and really it should be red. So what I tried to achieve is three lines of white, three lines of green, three lines of pink. I was gonna do three lines of red, but then I decided to have two red and, and three blue instead. And the process was basically, as I said, moving one line over to the next and it's taken two, two to two and a half hours to do that. I already had three whites and then I did the green and the pink and the red. And that obviously removed a lot of keys and it took a lot of effort capturing footage with both cameras. So with this one up here, I was using a remote control and with this one, I was using uh, a connection through my phone. There's an app with the Panasonic cameras called image app where you can basically remote control the camera from your phone and the reason for doing that is it avoids touching the camera so you don't get any shake and any movement because any movement in this even slight is going to completely ruin the stop motion so i'm hoping there's not too much of that i do every time the shutter went off this wobble they were so slightly so that's not ideal i think this one might not be as good as this one in terms of quality but the reason i captured two is two to get two different angles and also to see if one was better than the other uh, in case one went wrong, hopefully the other one's still intact. So because I've spent probably about six hours doing this now, and that's obviously a lot of work. And so I didn't want to get to the end and find that it was broken. The other thing I was working out was how many pictures to take because I took, initially started taking four, I think. By the end of it, I was taking 10 on this one and eight on this one. And I actually increased the number of photos that I was taking the closer I got to the end with the basis that some of the red keys, for example, would only be moving a little distance. So it wouldn't be as satisfying as seeing the white ones going from here all the way across to the end. And so where that was just four photographs for every time there was a new line, this red one was 10 because of the basis that that would be a lot smaller movement and therefore 10 photos would take up 
a longer period of time in the video. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. It'll be interesting to see whether it's as satisfying as I was hoping it was going to be. But basically I want to try and sort of roughly keep the same speed. My maths is probably off, it's probably not perfect, but I ended up taking like a thousand photos on one camera and 700 on the other. So there's a lot of photos which are going to be turned into a stop motion. Now my next goal is to just get some video footage with it like this, just some B-roll, just to show the different keycap colours that are available. Um, and then I'm going to put it back on the desk. And I had an idea of changing all the colours. I think I'm probably going to go change it to white. So change it all back to white. And then I thought the idea it might be fun just to take one key in one line and move it all the way across to the end. For example, the enter. So if we took a red enter key, obviously it's going to be, <laughs> it'll be the red, whatever the red key is for that line. So again, using the same process. So it goes red caps lock, but white everything else, then white A, I mean red A, and then white caps lock, and then red S and red uh, white A. So basically you're seeing the key moving across the keyboard, but obviously it has to be a different key every time with the end result being that the enter key ends up red, or maybe, I don't know, I don't know what color would be most satisfying on white. I'm not sure I like the, the red ones. I might make it blue, white and blue. I like the blue ones, they look kind of nice. Green stands out a bit easier though. So maybe green and white might be good. I think I might do that, white and green. Because one thing I've noticed that might show up and might not in the video is the lettering on the blue doesn't stand out very well. The blue is very nice, but the lettering doesn't stand out as clearly as it does on, say, the green or the white where it's really visible. I don't know what the difference is with the lighting on, so I might capture some B-roll of that as well because I want to do a video. I want to do a couple of videos. One is essentially a stop motion of this happening. The other one's going to be an unboxing of the keycaps and then maybe the third one or sort of a mix of the two, which is how to upgrade your K65 to look completely different from what it does as standard, obviously. There's not even a standard key on here anymore. So there you go, that's what six hours of effort looks like. I'm really tired, my knees hurt, I've been on the floor kneeling down constantly, avoiding getting anything in the way. And that's one of the things of these stop motions is you have to try and avoid getting anything in the way, but also avoid getting any light in there. So standing up doing it isn't ideal because you end up blocking the light and creating shadows that wouldn't be there otherwise. Anyway, that's the summary for this behind the scenes video. I hope you found it really useful or interesting or hilarious, especially when you see the mistakes that I've probably made in the stop motion. Be sure to check out the actual unboxing and stop motion videos so you can see the magic of it. I'll include some B-roll of it in this video, but hopefully you'll have a look and watch that one as well. Excuse my tiredness. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of the behind the scenes videos in the playlist and let me know in the comments if there's any more you'd like to see. Also pop by my Discord and get chatting to me. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see from behind the scenes stuff and click that join button because there is one currently behind the scenes video that's for members only on how much money I'm making as a 30,000 subscriber YouTuber if you're interested and I'm planning on doing more members only videos in the near future too this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this video useful interesting hilarious or otherwise take a look at these other videos that i think you might find interesting as well and have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my youtube channel and most importantly have a great life